you are here with me, James Welsh, author of Corroborating Evidence, the UFO Investigation of the Millennium. Okay, I've uh, briefly discussed uh, my initial sightings on the 4th of December 1999 and then my second night of sightings on the 10th of December 1999 at 16.45. So if we fast forward now another 12 hours, it's now 4.45am on the 11th of December 1999. Now, my friend Christine and I were about to head out to head into town to get the stream away. I went to queue for three limited tickets for a gig which was being played that, that night by Travis, but, um, who currently held the number one position uh, with her debut album, The Man Who, at the time. So, it's quarter to five, right? We were about to leave the house. We just got a winter clothes on. Uh, going brave, uh, you know, cold December air in Glasgow, basically. Um, and as we opened the front door at 4.45am, we hadn't even left the house and we seen one of these. Now, the object was roughly two streets away. Um, it appeared to be travelling over railway lines, uh, very, very close to the Lineside Station. Uh, very bright, oval you know, uh, completely silent. So, we seen this object, basically, and uh, we shut the house, you know, sh shut the door over, and ran into this lane here, uh, across the road from my mother's, and the object was approaching from the left here. Um, below the height of the, the buildings on the, the right there, so we were uh, just above the sheds on the left, where the pole was, and it was coming along from our left towards our right and we ran into this lane to see it as it passed in direct, direct alignment with us. Now, it stopped just short of getting to the pole. Uh, as I say, it was only, you know, a few millimetres above this, uh, this shed here, which is next to that big pole there. Um, so it was very low and as I say, it was hovering above these uh, railway lines. Now, it stopped and a second object then suddenly appeared it just, it just came out of nowhere boom, there it was and these two objects pulled up together uh, sat stationary and began to start exchanging light patterns to one another uh, my friend Christine commented that they almost seemed to be talking in lights and as bizarre as that seems that's exactly what it looked like <coughs> now for a, for a similar comparison, uh, visual comparison, on YouTube, if you typed in Lake Erie, Lake Erie two UFOs, you will find a very, very similar sighting, uh, with the exception that my own was in much closer proximity. So, we started watching these two objects, um, exchanging these light patterns, or talking to one another, as it were, um, for a moment or two, when another object appeared, um, much higher up, um, it was like a star-like object, and I would say it was somewhere above the the middle of that window frame, you know, quite high up, further away, as I say. But we noticed this object because it started pulsating in a very, very bright light, and um, it was like boom, 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 and we were basically. It was like a big massive camera flash in the sky, you know, it was like poof. And when this went off, um, we were completely enveloped in light, which lasted for just a brief second. Now when it did, it was that bright that um, I seen both my friend and my shadow on this fence here on the left. Uh, bear in mind it was pitch black at the time, uh, you know, quarter to five in the morning sort of thing. So, um, this light came down on us, it was incredible, uh, only lasted as a second, um, when it did, as I say, I noticed our, our shadows appear on this fence very briefly, and I also happened to notice that the light itself seemed to bounce about everywhere within the light, um, and my friend comp compared that to, it was like glitter, um, and I also came across another account um, which happened in 1992 which was the Gary Woods case where he by described um, coming across an object and drove through a wall of light which he compared to a detune television set and that was all 
also very very similar to, to what I actually observed. Um, when this light went off, it was very brief, um, and it affected the eyes. It would temporarily rewinded this for a moment, in which time all three of these objects had since vanished. So that was incredible. Um, so we made our way down to this location here, which was on en route to my, my friend's house to go and pick them up and I'll meet up with them and then head into town. But these flats, there's three flats there uh, behind that tree line in the middle there. Now that's uh, the Tory Glen area of Glasgow. Now basically um, when we get down here we then observe repeated activity um, for the next two hours um, from you know five five o'clock to quarter to seven, seven o'clock ish. Um, during which time the most amount of objects we've seen at any one given time is three objects, right? Uh, and they seem to be repeatedly moving back and forth across uh, this area as if they were conducting a scan or search of the area. Now, at one point, one of the objects came up and had a very, very close up inspection of this tower block. Now, it flew over to it. Uh, and then descended down towards uh, 45 degrees until it was directly over it and then deserted vertically. As it moved down, there was a light trail which came from a button and the object dipped behind this flat. Now, it was roughly the same length as the flat, which is a good 100 to 150 feet across. I would say it was about three stories uh, deep at least, so it was about 60 foot high. Um, and the object, as I say, disappeared completely behind the building and the light trail went down and followed it. Um, just as the light trail disappeared behind the flat as well, the, the object then ascended again and the light trail now came from underneath it and it moved away from the high flat. So that was incredible. Um, so later on, um, we then heard a screaming thunder overhead and almost immediately three tornado jets were practically right overhead uh, roughly 200 foot off the ground no more than that and they came screaming over the top of Queen's Park which is on a, a natural hill uh, hill 60 they came screaming over the top of that hugging hugging the terrain basically um, and you could almost reach out and touch them as they passed over you know they had their wings swept back and they were in a hurry and um, as they came over head, the, the objects which were still over Rutherglen then began to depart. So we had both a visual on jets and the UFOs. Um, so it's my guess that obviously the pilots must have had the visual on them as well. But as the objects departed, um, they flew in the direction, uh, they flew east, and the sun was just coming up. So this would have skewed, skewed the, the pilot's vision somewhat. And they would have had to rely on radar mostly, but obviously they, they had them on radar if they were able to vector in on them. And um, this sight with the jets obviously demonstrates that the Ministry of Defence was well aware that um, unknown objects were breaching controlled airspace over Glasgow and were responding to it. Um, so later on, I looked into all this and uh, tried to locate these jets. Uh, checked with air bases in Scotland and I was given a run around basically between the Ministry of Defence, the RAF and Civil Aviation Authority and uh, nobody knows, seems to know where these jets came from but we'll go into that again later on so as I say that was my sighting on the 11th um, so basically um, you know um, we were struck with a light which came from one of these objects and we seen jets um, chasing after them later on so a very bizarre night, uh, all in all, really. Um, so, thanks again for tuning in, and I will get back to you shortly with my next sign, which took place on the 14th of December 1999. So, signing out for the moment. Um, cheers.